This is, I feel like Doug DeMiro now. <laughs> This is my 2011 Honda CRZ. I like to autocross it. <laughs> it's fun for me as a beginner. It's a good beginner car, I, I think. I guess I wouldn't know because I'm a beginner. It's been good, but it definitely has some problems. A big, big one being the body roll. Rolling right, zero, six, zero. So today we're gonna address that. We got some springs, a rear sway bar. The sway bar is a And some camber bolts to help with the alignment. Do you want me to show you one first? Kinda, yeah, cause I don't know what to do with these So we're gonna get this bad boy in the garage and get started. I don't think I stressed how bad the body roll was enough. It's pretty bad. I know you wouldn't think it to look at this car, but it does have pretty significant body roll. Yeah, I mean, it looks relatively sporty, but it's still a bone stock car that's meant to cater to the masses, so it's going to have a very compliant suspension. Any body roll in autocross is not good for anybody, but especially as a beginner, it feels freaky. So even if it's not necessarily hurting performance, it's like, Mentally, you think you're limited more than you are because the body roll just feels... Yeah, I mean, some amount of body roll can help give you predictions about how the car is going to act. And if you know how to throw it around properly, it can be fine. But as much as this car does, it is actively limiting the amount of lateral grip that it has. So we definitely need to tidy some of that up. But it's still a budget race car. I'm pretty sure you've had shoe boxes that were bigger than this. The, 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 the paint! The paint. <laughs> Not the paint. <laughs> We've run TNs before, not for race car purposes per se, but just to clean up wheel gap. I'm trying to remember what all we had them on. The IS300 is the main thing that comes That's to mind. That's what comes to mind. And it didn't have a terrible ride quality. Just tidying up some wheel gap with a little bit stiffer of a spring rate that's more controllable on course. Yeah, because autocross and ride quality are not the same goals. No, as we found with the Miata, mm -hmm. trying to balance a decent autocross setup. <laughs> Awesome. With a decent daily setup because I daily the Miata a thousand miles a week. Especially if we have a mild winter. Springs that are good for Minnesota potholes are not also ideal for autocross. There, there's a very small crossover there. I'm comfortable enough daily and also stiff enough for race car shit. These should provide about that same balance for the CRZ. Can you open that? Can you open it? Can you get it open? Uh, okay. For every large flat surface in here is all covered. But it's covered with important trash. Oh, what a weird color. They're baby poop green. That's not bronze. That's a really gross That is color. not bronze. We need a banana for size reference. Can you tell which ones are the front and which ones are the rears? There might be a part number that ends in R or F on it. I was seeing if they look different. That does have an R on it. Oh, look at the difference. Hold on a minute. Pretty much any time you buy springs, it's always gonna look like that, right? The, dip, the big difference in the front and the rear? Yeah, because the front and rear have very different spring rates. Typically, the stiffer looking one is going to go on the front. Well, it's weird. These part numbers must not be right or relevant then. That must not be what well, it is. No, that's why it's worth checking the directions to make sure, because that is certainly an F. And this one is definitely starting with an R. So maybe that boy is going in the rear. Let's check the directions. We're just gonna look at them real quick. We're not reading the directions. We're just gonna look at them really quick just to make sure. Ah, excellent. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, we got a couple of vague directions. Pictures. But it doesn't tell the part number to use on which one. Will it not be obvious when we pull off the stock springs? Yeah, it, it probably will be. We'll figure that out. We'll figure which one is supposed to go where. Also, we gotta see why this tire was low. We had to pump this tire up. May That's just the daily tire. That's not the racing tire. Yeah, I mean, obviously these SIs are just dailies. We uh, we don't race on those. She's got a set of race tires around here somewhere. One of these sets is her, those ones. The springs actually shouldn't take very long at all. Honda suspension is very quick and easy to get swapped out. You say that before every seven hour project. I've never said that before, I don't think. I'll start at the front or the back. 
Which one should be more complicated? Same, same. The springs will be about the same difficulty. In the front, we're doing camber bolts, and in the rear, we're doing a sway bar, so same, same. Dealer's choice. Front or rear first? Front. Front first it is. Let's take some stuff apart. What next? Uh, let's grab you a light. What is it, tiny monster? Oh yeah, the tiny monster is awake now. And he has animal crackers. So, that should keep him entertained enough. So you're gonna need to undo these two bolts right here, that brake line, and you're gonna need to pop that guy out of his little home. Boop, about like that. There, all right, what size is the brake line? I think it's a 12. Here, go. All right, brake line is free. Now we need the end link undone up here. Yep. We need to undo the top nut for it under the hood. It popped the hood. That? Yep, that guy right there. That's and big. it should be your same 17 mil. Let's see if you can get that on there. Just push against the plastic, it'll push out of the way. There we go. Your strut should wiggle out now. Just wiggle the whole thing? Yep, just be careful of your ABS line and the brake line go forward with it once you get it popped loose. Push it back so that it falls off the knuckle. There we go. Ow, mother There we go. I'm gonna do all of that on the other side, but like a little faster. All right, now that we've got them out, it's time to compress the stock springs and get them off of here. They were made in a factory, a bomb factory. Have a wonderful time. Uh-uh. <laughs> I've never what? done this and it seems sketchy. It's only a little sketchy. What, you put them on and then they squish? Yeah, pretty much. Here, trade. Pop these bad boys on here wherever we best can. We've got it compressed enough that we can yoink that nut off and get her apart now. Uh, what size does that look like? It's the square hole. Now the internal shaft of the shock is spinning. Is that bad? It's annoying. It's not bad, it's annoying and it's often happens. So you're supposed to use an Allen wrench in the top of the strut and turn it with a wrench on the outside instead of just impact yoinking it. It's a minor inconvenience. But you'll have that. Yeah, you're right, bud. You know all about inconveniences, huh? Are you in inconvenience? You're pretty fucking cute though, honestly. It's... I would never say that about my yeah. children. Shut up. <laughs> you, you will. You're lying. Man, this is always a pain in the ass. <laughs> but this is the way it's supposed to be done. You know what would be nice is if we actually have an impact bit in this Allen size. I'm gonna look for that. It's like a work smarter, not harder kind of thing. Yeah, and if we do have one, me being able to find it would be a Whoever is supposed to be organizing all this shit is not doing a very good job. This looks totally organized. Get out. Get out of my garage. Probably be faster than you coaching me through it though. Yeah, but, but it wouldn't be as fun. Yeah, the, the real efficiency was the friends we made along the way. Why does he have to cut his grass right now? I know. Doesn't he know we're trying to do something? We got the right size bit on a big stupid impact and I think it's gonna work. So we actually wanna go righty tidy to drive this nut off with that. Oh yeah. Get off. There we go. That's not really the intended way to do that, but it fucking works. Man, that's hot. Now we can take that guy off. There we go. Now that sleeve can come out. Wow. And the bump stop is built into it in there. So when you go to bottom out your suspension, that's what it bounces off of. And uh, according to the directions, I don't read good, but uh, I do understand pictures. And it shows us, as with most lowering springs, you're gonna have to cut some amount of the bump stop because the car is now sitting lower and you don't want it to just be riding on the bump stop. You wanna trim that up. And trimming it up and allowing a further range of the shock travel is also the thing that makes stock shocks blow. 
if you're running stock shocks with lowering springs, this allowing this further travel that wasn't initially intended, that's that's the thing that makes shocks blow. And that's why it's advised that you run like Coney Yellows or something with a set of lowering springs. But this is a budget race car. We're just gonna give her the old switcheroo. Let's get the spring off of here, get the bomb compressors off of it. There we go. Often you want to try to reuse rubber isolators off of the stock springs. So we're gonna hang on to that and see if we can reuse it. Yeah, that's like almost a one for one match. The bigger guy is going in the front, the one that does have the F in the part number. With that, this one's put back together and ready to go back in. And as is typical with lowering springs, we did not need to compress it to get it back together because it already sits shorter than the stock spring. So it's only shorter by like half an inch. The half an inch is enough to be able to get it on without compressing it, so we're good. Just do all that again on the other side and we're ready to slap it all back together. Now that both of the springs are swapped out, that's all done. It went back together happy enough. This one immediately stripped out its little Allen head tip and I had to do the old vice grip on the shaft. But other than that, no problems at all. Uh, everything goes back together very nicely. But before we put them in, we're gonna address these crusty tie rods. It's due for them on both sides. So we're gonna go ahead and get those swapped out. You sure about that? You sure about that? You sure about that? Change of plan. Apparently it's really hard to get that tie rod off with everything loosey-goosey in there. So we're gonna put the struts back in and get everything back together first. You know how to put all this back together? Uh, I recommend sticking that up through there and putting the top nut back on first. What, so the top nut will hold it in for you? Yeah, so it kind of holds everything together for you. So so... Poke the strut up through and I'll put this on up top. Am I close? Close. There we go. There we go. Is that enough for you? Uh -huh. Thing on there. You good, sir? You keep throwing your Hot Wheels and your blocks out here. Okay, okay. Boop. Does it matter which order? Not particularly. I would get the bottom of the strut reconnected to the knuckle first. And for that, you need your new... Ooh, ba Ooh, grab two of those bolts out of there. Yep. Sir, this is a 787B and you are abusing it. All right then. So those two bolts are gonna be what go back through your knuckle. Which side do the tabbies go on? That little metal tabby right there mm -hmm. is supposed to stick inside of the knuckle. So this one is oriented properly. That one needs to be flipped around. I guess my question was these go in here or do you right. want me to show you one first? Kinda, yeah, because oh. I don't know what to do with these fucking tabbies. Okay, let me show you. So we get the knuckle up in here. We stick a bolt through. And then once we get them run down, those tabbies are gonna sink in and help show where the alignment is. That was a little bit more of a pain in the ass than I remember. I haven't used these camber bolts in a long time. And I also don't have the, the crayons to explain to you how they work. Uh, I barely understand it myself. I'll leave a link in the description to the video that I use that explains how to set these things up. And that's what I use because I only vaguely know what I'm doing. That right there is what we've got them set to with the tabby facing inward on the top and outward on the bottom and with the cams themselves set to what appears to give the maximum inward on top and outward on bottom. Hopefully that does it for us. We'll find out when we go to set the alignment on this thing in a little bit. Just go slap the other side back together real quick and then we can go back to fighting with those tie rods. While he keeps working on 
that. I had to pull an axle out for some reason. You'll figure it out. We're gonna see if we can figure out why this old tire was leaking. Spray, 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 spray. I would start with the valve stem and the beads. Too late, I already started here. Lame. Well, so far nothing, but at a minimum we'll have a clean tire. All right, well, that didn't yield anything. Try the valve stem. Check the back bead. Old soapy water trick failed us. We'll figure it out. Keep going over it more. You just don't know how to do it right. I was doing this while you were still working on that. Go pop that axle back together. Mm -hmm. If any of y'all have a cheat code on how to pop disjointed Honda axles back together, let, let, let me know, because that shit's really annoying. Bead. I take back what I said, Soapy Water Trick. You didn't fail us. Back in here, uh, I cannot get this axle to pop back together. These things like to pop apart. You can see that it's like disjointed or dislocated. It happens sometimes when you're playing with knuckles or taking apart things in the front end of Hondas. The, the axles just, sometimes they pop apart and sometimes they don't pop right back together perfectly. So we're actually gonna have to learn how to open one of these up. Just called O'Reilly's, they have the tool, these bands, require a very specific tool to put the boot together. We're gonna have to cut the band off of this boot to open it up and reassemble everything properly and then we need to be able to clamp, hose clamp thing back onto it. So, let's go grab some. I've never used one of these before. Do you know how to use it? I hate those things so much. Oh, you like that? The boat paint? Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, that's... Whoever resprayed it threw a heavy metallic in there, huh? Ooh, really it's, heavy metallic. It's yeah. like bass boat paint. It is. Got a few places that justify repainting. I'm gonna start prepping it before too long. We're going with, uh, I'm thinking Plum Crazy Purple, actually. Ooh. That's always been my favorite Mopar color. I'm that a Plum Crazy Purple kind of guy. So. Pretty good. Yep. Purple Supra is what we all need. The interior has come a long way. The, the Corbos and the roll bar and all look pretty good. I'm happy with it. I think I might have bent a wheel at the last rally we did. Uh -oh. it's, uh, it's got a small weeble wobble only at very low speed. It levels out after like 10 miles an hour or so. Might have bent one of my three-piece wheels that I rally on like an idiot. Yeah, get home and see if this fixes the CRZ. <laughs> no idea how to use this thing and hopefully these bands are the right size i don't think this is the right size this is the only one they had oh well, i guess either way we're gonna see we gotta cut this thing open so we need to snip this thing right here now we can pop this boot off and see what it's mad about well at least the grease in here looks pretty good i don't see anything here that makes it look like it wouldn't want to pop back into place and there we go. Nothing was even dislocated in there. It just didn't want to pop back in for no fucking reason. Let's make this not fall apart again. That's for you. Blah, 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 blah. Now we just gotta put a band back on here and it's good. Yeah, there ain't no way this is gonna tighten up tight enough. It's way too big. Let's see if uh, we have a hose clamp big enough to fit on that. And we just might consult the pegboard of mystery. There's some stuff around here. Maybe there's a, hey, is that a big ass hose clamp? Neat. That's good. Just gonna trim this tail off and then we can get back to the thing that we were doing like two hours ago. Got the tie rod end off. It's a lot easier when uh, it's attached and everything is like holding each other steady. Weird. Yeah, there's how you can tell if your tie rod end is bad. That shouldn't be one fingerable. Get these new boys cracked on there and then we're ready to put wheels on and be done with the front until it's time for alignment anyway. I think we're good. I think we got everything replaced back exactly as it was and it only took don't, look, don't worry about the fact that it's dark out already. It would have been a 30 minute job if it hadn't been for 
replacing the tie rods and that axle popping out. Whatever. I'm just gonna put this leaky tire back on here. Not gonna worry about that right now. We'll just, uh, it's just a little leak at the bead and we will pump it up every time we go to drive it, I guess. Now that the whole front end is done, we can start on the back, which might be the easy one. You might've fucked up picking the front. That might not have been the easy one. Pop these wheels on and then we'll get the back ones off and see what's going on back there. Seems a lot more than one inch lower. I'm worried about it scrubbing on my, my RE71s are pretty thick. I guess we'll find out. But it looks like it has a visible amount of camber. We'll get a measurement on it. At least the ride height is tidied up. That looks pretty good. Let's make the back do that. So this thing has a really dumb axle arrangement. It's not independent rear suspension. The right wheel is connected all the way across that right there that bar runs all the way across and connects to the left side it's what they call a torsion beam axle i think i think that's what this is the whole thing is connected and it causes some inconveniences such as not being able to really do an alignment on the rear there's there's no alignment settings to adjust the, the wheels are just bolted to that beam axle and what you get what you get but it looks like it's easy enough to get these springs out i'm suspecting that the thing that limits their travel downwards is just this bolt on the shock so i think as soon as we pull those whole axle will swing down and we can get our springs out i think come on out little buddy oh it's one of those good pokey bolts let's see if that drops down further when we let it loose yeah when we let the other side loose it'll drop even more I want you to watch and make sure the brake lines don't start to stretch or anything. That generated enough room to get the springs out, I think. Mine's out. Just pop it up and out to the right. There you go. And there's our springs. Super easy to get the rears out. That was really easy. And now that we've got those out, let's look at the sway bar directions. Can you even tell it's there? It looks like there's something on your shirt. Bing bong audio check. I don't know if y'all can tell, but today's video has been almost exclusively recorded with our new DJI Osmo Pocket 3. Pretty neat little camera. Hopefully you can tell that it's a little more stable. It's got its own little built-in gimbal. Yeah. Parkour. It's supposed to be pretty stable, but it also has its own little microphone. The arsonist has oddly shaped feet. Sometimes we gotta spend a few dollars to impress you guys. GoPros haven't been cutting it the last couple of videos. If you watched the Supra engine rebuild the last couple of episodes, our ZV-1 actually died. It's over here. This was our nice camera. Uh, this is Sony ZV-1 that we've used on as long as we've been running the channel, actually, very first video was recorded on this camera. It started to do a purple screen of death once in a while and corrupt footage while you're recording. It got really hot one day in a bag that was left out in the sun and it's lived a good life. It served us pretty well, but I think this DJI is going to be even better. But if you notice this little square, that's a magnet. Well, let me just show you. It came with its own microphone has a little magnet. So if you don't want to clip it and have it, you know, visible on the outside of your shirt, you can just stick it inside and, oh, little magnet square. Get out of my business. What, you're the one showing If you can tell a difference in today's video quality, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. Anywho, here's our new sway bar. Got a bunch of hardware. We're installing a sway bar where there's not one already. And because of the beam axle, it's a little awkward because the axle itself already is kind of a giant sway bar. And this is just attaching to and reinforcing it, but it doesn't attach with typical sway bar end links. It just bolts to the axle flat on each side. More like a traditional brace, I feel like. Yeah, it's weird. Weird problems call for weird solutions. This axle is a weird problem. This sway bar is a weird solution. So I remember reading online that in order to get to one of the nut locations uh the spring has to be removed so we're gonna go ahead and get this installed while the springs are out and then we just pop our new springs back in i think this is the easiest sway bar install i've ever like by far it just bolts on there's no saddles to do there's no end links like just super easy all of these bolt holes lined right up and just goes through pre-existing holes in the axle and that's it that's bolted on so this whole swing of a jig should be stiffer now Let's get the springs ready to go in. 
are there is there a difference in height like there was with the front ones? Not really. They look same same. Pick it up so your thighs aren't behind it. The side by side. It's a lot of thigh you're showing on the internet, fucking. Oh my god. This one, please. That's how we get the views, baby. <laughs> Give me. Ow. Fuck you. We just pop these rubber isolators back in and springs should pop just right back in there. Boop. Just like that. Both springs are ready to pop back in and they appear to be the same. There's no difference left or right. So you can have this one for your side. Pop her back in there, nerd. Ah. Here we go. I'm just gonna lift this back up. Rear is fucking easy. And there we go. That's a sway bar and a set of TN springs installed. Let's see how this thing sits. It looks good. That tidied up wheel gap, just like it should have. It's still a functional daily driver height and should be a good track height, as long as the spring rates are good and that sway bar does its job. But we won't really know until we actually get out with it. Uh, and that's not gonna happen tonight because it's gotten late. Didn't I say this was only gonna take like 30 minutes? I guess we'll take it out and see what it do in the morning. The next, <laughs> the next morning. We got the CRZ up on the alignment rack. Just doing a basic string alignment. I already took it around the block and there's no weird noises, jangles. Everything seems happy enough, but you can tell that the alignment is completely fucked because we fucked with a lot of shit. So just gonna slap a quick alignment, basically just front end alignment. Like I said, the rear is not adjustable like at all, but the string method, works really well and it's not complicated you just square up a bunch of string we're gonna take some measurements make some adjustments based on that got the steering wheel secured straight just ratchet strap to the seat rails i'm not gonna spend a lot of time on how to do this some of y'all's attention spans are a little fucky Let's see how this thing feels. Not so bad. Took like 45 minutes, got the alignment knocked out pretty easy. As many cars as we have that we realign regularly, we're paying like $100 for an alignment every couple of months. And just taking 50 bucks to set up to be able to do your own alignments is super worth it, especially as much alignment related bullshit as we do. But I think I've got this set pretty well. We're at about 1.6 degrees of camber in the front. I would have liked more, but that was an easy, even amount that it played out to, so I didn't feel like adjusting it further, and that's that's a good starting point anyway. The toe was at about two inches. I don't know if you know anything about alignments, but in the industry, that's what we like to call fucked. So we got it set properly to about a 16th of an inch toe out now, which should perform really well on course and still track really well for daily driving. The wheel could be a little bit straighter, but it's tracking really well. It's not pulling in either direction. Feels good. You know what to do with that big fat butt. Get big that. I'm not feeling anything that I don't like. It seems like the whole project has gone well overall. So I'm gonna turn it over to her for uh, all the subjective opinions. All right, gang. Oh my God. Gavin did the last bit unsupervised. Oh, you're recording. Stop recording. Not only was he unsupervised for a lot of it, but he always swears up and down he's not a good mechanic. I think it's some sort of like compliment fishing that he does because he seems like a good mechanic to me, but I don't know. I'm biased. I do have a child with him and love him. some shakes it's, it's still got body roll y'all this is gonna sound maybe weird i don't know I, it feels heavier it's like it didn't have a center of gravity before it was like the suspension equivalent of throwing a hot dog down a hallway wow not what i was expecting i don't know why i guess because of inexperience or uh, lack of technical knowledge and jargon i just i guess just magically thought all the body roll would be gone and that's not the case it's still there I can still feel it. You can still see it probably on camera a little bit. Definitely better, definitely less, but it is still there, which is fair, but it does feel very different. When it rolls, I can feel like a center of gravity 
that did not exist before. Even though it's rolling, it makes it feel more predictable because I can tell where it's rooted, where it's coming from, where it's gonna go. I'm really excited to see how it does on actual autocross track, not on the highway outside my neighborhood. We got a race event coming up in a couple weeks and I can't wait to see what a difference this makes. We'll keep you guys posted. Don't forget, if you become a member, you get exclusive perks, bragging rights, chickens named after you, because we couldn't do this without you guys. So shout out to the members. If you want to be one, do it. Thank you. Aye, go faster, aye.